Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Good evening, all. You are on mute. Vinay Kumar, welcome to this international webinar. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here on this day. Madam, please. Uh So, has any madam? A partner's answer, you're like giving for a kiss now. So, has any matter? Sir, shall I start the program? Yes, madam. We cannot hear you, sir. Now, am I audible, madam? Suhasana, madam? Suhasana, madam, am I audible? Sir, you are not audible, sir. Okay, sir. Now, am I audible? Good evening. 
It's yes, my sir, pleasure yes, sir. to welcome distinguished honorable dignitaries, esteemed respected members, ladies and gentlemen from Karnataka, West Bengal, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Telangana, Australia, London, USA, and from different colleges of Telangana. Once again, welcome to you all. Thank you for joining today's webinar. First of all, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. G. Suhasini, Head Department of Zoology, Pingil Government College for Warangal, and convener of this webinar. We are all now in a digital era and have been witnessing the COVID-19 pandemic since December 2019, which has started an online culture and taught all of us to extract the best out of it. And this program is a part of it. We have extracted the resources available and trying to conduct this program. So I request all the participants to go on mute and all our well-wishers are watching us live on YouTube. So kindly turn off your videos as we are ready to commence the program. On behalf of Zoology Department, I extend very warm and hearty welcome to this international webinar on stopping the surge of COVID. I am privileged to invite the chairperson, Dr. G. Raja Reddy, Principal, Government College for Women, Vadepelli. Welcome, sir. Next, welcome, it's sir. my honor to welcome today's speaker, Vinay Kumar Arepelli, Manufacturing Science and Technology Scientist, currently working in Sun Pharmaceutical USA. It's my pleasure to invite Dr. Y. Venkaya, Head Department of Zoology, Takti University, Warangal. Welcome, sir. And a warm welcome to our advisor and TGGCTA President Sanjeevaya, sir, Assistant Professor Kakatiya Government Degree College, Warangal. I invite advisor and TG GCTA General Secretary, Dr. K. Surender Reddy, Assistant Professor of Zoology, SRR Government Arts and Science College, Karim Nagar. Hearty welcome, sir. I invite our Vice Principal and IQSC Coordinator, Dr. Ramavat Ravi, sir, and Dr. D. Ramakrishna, Academic Coordinator. Welcome, sir. I, I am pleased to welcome all the organizing committee members, advisory members, faculty participating from various colleges of Telangana and other states of our states and our college faculty, students, and all distinguished participants from other countries. Once again, hearty welcome. And a brief introduction about our college. Pingil Government College is the prestigious, oldest women's government college in the state, established in the year 1965. To its legacy, it is permanently affiliated to Kakatiya University. It is re-accredited with NAC A grade and ISO certified college with UG and PG with about 2,000 students. Next, I request our chairperson to say the remarks about this webinar. Thank you, madam. Madam, am I audible? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening once again, everyone. In this pandemic situation, especially 
when we are considering the situation in india it is very horrible unexplainable and everyone is limited to their homes when we are very busy we were very busy with our activities throughout the day and night we were habituated to work hard 24 hours round the clock but now everyone is restricted to their homes especially due to the pandemic now what is the situation in india especially in india when compared to some of the advanced countries like america and israel now they have came came across the same situation and they have controlled it successfully and they are moving around as usual as in the case of pre covid situations now i request the participants and the key speakers and uh, other learned to highlight the indian situation especially how to overcome what are the main causes for prevalence of so high degree of uh, uh, this uh, disease and uh, some remedial measures when uh, in contrast to india i request uh, Uh, Vinay Kumar especially to so show some guidelines or some guy so some important uh, road to come out of the main especially uh, COVID pandemic. Now I request uh, Dr. Y Venkaya, Head Department of Zoology. to express opinion regarding the importance of this seminar venkaya sir please dr vai venkaya sir please give your opinion venkaya sir okay please sir sir hasn't come dr sanjeev vai sir advisor committee Sanjeev member Sanjeev and sanjeev vai sir please sanjeev vai garu please respond sir sir dr k surendra reddy sir sanjeev vai sir are you there sir is present sir sanjeev vai sir please give your opinion valuable suggestion in this regard Dr. A. Sanjeev Ayyagaru, advisory member, TGC, GCTA president. Dr. Sanjeev Ayyagaru, sir. Hello. Sir, please. Sir, please, we can please, hear sir. you, sir. Okay, please, okay, sir. okay, madam. Okay. And uh, first of all, I congratulate Vodepelli Women's Pingil College principal, Dr. Raja Redigaru. ఆర్గనైజింగ్ కమిటీ కన్వీనర్ మేడం సుహాసిని గారు అండ్ స్పీకర్ వినయ్ కుమార్ గారు ఆర్గనైజింగ్ కమిటీ మెంబర్స్ రామకృష్ణ రేణుక మేడం కల్పన రమావత్ రవి ఆల్ అండ్ ఆల్ ఆర్గనైజింగ్ కమిటీ మెంబర్స్ అండ్ ఆల్సో స్పెషల్లీ ఐ కంగ్రాచులేట్ అండ్ ఆల్సో డాక్టర్ వై వెంకయ్య హెచ్ఓడి అండ్ ఆల్సో క్షమిత మేడం ఇస్తారి సార్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఇస్తారి అండ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ నారాయణ అండ్ జీసీజీటీఏ జనరల్ సెక్రటరీ డాక్టర్ రవీంద్ సురేందర్ రెడ్డి ఈచ్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ టు ఆల్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ వన్స్ అగైన్ ఐ కంగ్రాచులేట్ అండ్ అప్రిసియేట్ ఇన్ దిస్ క్రూషియల్ కండిషన్ ఫర్ ఆర్గనైజింగ్ సచ్ సచ్ ఎక్సలెంట్ అండ్ రిలవెంట్ టాపిక్ Uh, arranging speech, speech on the uh, topic uh, this uh, covid surge of covid 19 and uh, i wish all of you all the best for this uh, 
by selecting this uh, wonderful topic at right time really it is uh, necessary entire world is suffering afraid of this corona and uh, we expect a valuable information regarding this topic and to enlighten the people and uh, i and also i appreciate and i, I all the participants throughout the world and really it is great opportunity to opportunity to me to involve in this program and once again swasini madam garu and raja reddy garu and all of you pingil college team i appreciate and let us will have the very good topic and thank you very much for for me inviting me thank this program chala much you, program organizer sir thank you very much thank you and congrats thank you thank you dr sanjeev sir for your blessings okay, dr kesure dr kesure indra reddy sir general secretary tgc district please give your valuable opinion sir sir rale sir dr ravi sir vice principal dr ramakrishna reddy academic coordinator please dr ramakrishna reddy sir dr ramakrishna reddy sir are you there anpinchandi sir thank you ramakrishna reddy sir please speak few words Okay. Sorry for this uh, non-availability. Now I request the main speaker, Vinay Kumar Arapalli from USA, to sir, introduction, sir. To give you a valuable overview and some remedies. Before that, I request Dr. Suhasini, Madam, to introduce the Vinay Kumar Arapalli Garu. Please, Dr. Suhasini, Madam. Okay, sir. Okay. Suhasini, Madam, please introduce. Just a minute, sir. A warm welcome to international webinar on stop the surge of COVID-19. To today's speaker, young speaker. Vinay Kumar Arepelli, Manufacturing Science and Technology Scientist from Sun Pharmaceuticals, USA. And this part of the webinar is organized by Pingil Government College, Warangal, Telangana, by the Department of Zoology. A brief introduction about Our speaker, Mr. Vinay Kumar Arapalli is from New Jersey, but hails from Barangal, is presently in New Jersey, United States of America. He is currently working as a manufacturing science and technology scientist for a well-established generic Sun Pharmaceutical USA. Coming to his educational qualifications, Vinay Kumar has done his bachelor's degree in pharmacy and master's in healthcare informatics from Sacred Heart University, USA and master's in project management from Cumberland University, USA. Uh, this is the short and brief introduction about Vinay Kumar. Vinay will be sharing his views and thoughts on the surge of COVID-19 in India and in the world. And now let's get into the session and hear from Vinay. 
thank you and over to vinay if any one have questions during the presentation please type them into the chat box i will bring them up to the presentation and we will also have time for questions at the end of the session vinay sir please start your session sir yes sir so uh thank you so much swasni garu for introducing me to the panel and uh, thank you raja reddy garu for uh, attending uh, this great webinar and uh, i know how much it takes uh, to be a part of this team and uh, so i know who is working behind the scenes like it people and everyone i really appreciate them for uh, making this conference successful so now let's uh, get into the session hey so let me share my screen okay all right okay so can everyone see this yes sir yes sir visible okay so getting into the topic uh, so today we chose the great i mean like uh, what is going around in the world so the topic would be how to stop the surge of covid-19 in india also in the world so coming to our presentation it will be more focusing on the preventive methods and what other countries are doing and what india is lagging behind today so getting into the topic my agenda will be the background of the covid and how it is started and how it is replicated in all the countries not only in india but also in the usa australia israel everywhere in the world and i'll be discussing few points from the world health organization on covid-19 since it started in 2020 so what is the current mortality rate compared to the past because as we all know the, during the initial times india has very less cases reported but in the second wave of covid-19 india has affected a lot and we can see the spike of the cases and the mortality rate has increased dramatically so what are we doing different than all other countries so why are we why are we why are we lagging behind the preventive methods and what what mistake are we performing there so we're going to discuss that in the future slides and what has happened during the second hit of the virus in india and social distancing guidelines at workplace i know most of the people who attended this meeting are working or going to school or having the education or whatever it may be but we will be meeting with of people during our day to day life so let's discuss what we can do so this is like a caution because you know uh, i cannot conclude everything because it's not in our hands and it is not uh, said anywhere even the vaccines are not 100% released so i just want to make a disclaimer that this presentation by itself is not sufficient training for individuals and personals who have potential for occupational exposure to the sars cov 19 virus so you should make a note that this training this is an awareness training only all right so so i just want to talk a little bit about the covid 19 virus and the background and where it started how it started so here if you see the sars covid 19 that's a i know i mean everyone know about the sars right so that's a serious acute respiratory syndrome is a virus that causes the coronavirus disease and uh, many respiratory infections are caused by coronavirus 
because you know virus is not a, just a virus it's a family like a family of viruses that are easily spread through the respiratory droplets in the air or in the surfaces so these viruses can be spread easily person to person and uh, little if immunity in humans they will be prone more to the disease and it is causing a severe illness and the death so it features sustained person to person spread worldwide so this coronavirus is not only restricted to any country or any immune system it is affecting everyone in the world and it poses an especially high risk for the 60 years or old elderly people with pre existing health conditions such as who have the blood pressures who have the heart disease who have the lung disease and the diabetes and autoimmune disorders and certain workers who are working for the covid-19 hospitals so here i have collected i have made a research on the covid-19 so i have choose the good organizations the world war organizations like world health organization who and uh, ministry of health from india and cdc from the united states so you can refer to the reliable sources such as who cdc and ministry of health state and central health department peer reviewed science publications so i just want to make a note here so covid-19 is rapidly changing on day to day basis so i just want you guys to look onto this websites mentioned here for the daily update all right so next going into the next slide so what world health organization initially warned the countries around the world on march 11 2020 the world health organization characterized the covid-19 as a pandemic because they already know because we we know that uh, there is a there is a virus called influenza back in the days so when the when influenza virus attacked the country everyone was on the death rolls so the world health organization they took an initiative to say covid-19 is a pandemic so here i have collected a video from the world health organization's news so let us watch this video and uh, see how it started and uh, what we have to do okay so let me play this video also please let me know if you cannot see the video uh, but i'll i'll just pop up from here If you want to know why you're so tired so often, look at this banana. It's fresh, brightly colored. Looks great. Uh, we cannot see the name. Okay. Thank you. Let me share that. Can you see now? Yes, we can see. All right. On March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization made an announcement. In the past two weeks, the number of cases of COVID-19 outside China has increased 13-fold. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. The coronavirus or COVID-19 disease had already overwhelmed China, South Korea, Iran, and Italy. and this was a warning to other countries where it was now spreading quickly in the days and weeks ahead we expect to see the number of cases the number of deaths and the number of affected countries climb even higher the spread of covid-19 was no longer something that could be stopped we can't still slow it down we just have to act right now Someone with COVID-19 usually develops a fever and a cough. Aches, pains, and other mild symptoms are also possible but are less frequent. 
but the severity of those symptoms varies. And for some people who get the virus, you might never show symptoms at all. Based on the data from China, the vast majority of cases are not life-threatening. In 80% of cases, people experience only mild disease, but in 20% of cases, the disease can manifest in a more serious way or can develop into quite a severe pneumonia where People need to be hospitalized and put on ventilators. Overall, it seems like about 1 to 2% of known cases lead to death. But that rate is much lower for young people and much higher for the elderly. And it also seems that people with unmanaged underlying chronic diseases, they also have a tougher time overcoming the virus. The virus also seems to be very contagious, more contagious than the flu. All you need to do to spread COVID-19 is cough or sneeze on someone else, touch a surface where the virus still lives, and then put your hand in your mouth or your eyes or your nose. After getting infected, it can take an average of five to six days before you feel sick and your symptoms start to appear. But you can already spread it to people in that period, even if you feel healthy. Just as people realize they're sick, they seem to be at the most risk of passing it along to others. That's how the virus has been so effective at spreading across the world so quickly and why the WHO was now calling COVID-19 a pandemic. But what they said next was just as important. We cannot say this loudly enough. All countries can still change the course of this pandemic. And that depends on something each of us needs to do as individuals. So diseases become really dangerous when everyone gets sick at once and the health system becomes overwhelmed. In any hospital, the capacity to treat patients is limited by how many beds they have. Think of this as the number of beds in your local hospital at any given time. A couple are already filled by patients receiving treatment for things like a car accident injury or a stroke. And this dot represents one person who's healthy and decides to go out like usual. They jump on the subway and head into the office where they catch COVID-19 but they don't feel sick right away and might not for several days. So later they go to a basketball game where they unknowingly infect two or three more people. Most of these people will have relatively mild cases, but one might be an elderly person with a severe case who will eventually have to go to the hospital. But these three who are all infected but don't feel sick go out again on the subway, into the office, and then out after work, infecting several more people 20% of whom will need to go to the hospital. Over a short period of time, this process multiplies the number of people going to the hospital each day. Before long, the hospital is full and a crisis begins. People with severe cases of COVID-19 can't get treatment and some who could be saved die. Plus people with other issues can't get treatment either and some of them die. This surge of severe cases causes avoidable deaths. That's what happened in South Korea, Iran, and Italy, all of which went from 100 to more than 5,000 cases in less than two weeks. A lot of people died because they couldn't get into the hospitals. The surge is made up of only severe cases, but it was generated by people who didn't feel sick, spreading the disease in public. Which means the people who can do the most to avoid these unnecessary deaths are these people. And that means all of us. To slow the virus down, you need to act as if you already have it. By avoiding public transportation, the office, crowded places, and even small social gatherings, you decrease your chances of both getting the disease and spreading it. This is called social distancing. If enough of us do it, the virus still spreads, but much slower. Over time, many people might still get infected, but fewer severe cases show up to the hospital each day, never overwhelming the system. This trend line gets flatter. These people can all get treatment, and fewer people die because of it. These are the two ways the COVID-19 pandemic can play out. But this one only happens if everyone does their part. And it's why experts and officials are urging people to flatten the curve by social distancing and staying home as much as possible. It's also why in the US, many companies are helping by requiring employees to work from home, and major sports leagues have canceled their games for the time being. It may seem drastic, but it's worked before. In 1918, the cities of Philadelphia and St. Louis were both hit by a flu pandemic, but they responded in different ways. In Philadelphia, health officials allowed a huge parade to go ahead. While in St. Louis, officials prepared. They closed schools, theaters, and bars. Philadelphia's hospitals were overwhelmed, and many more died as a result. But St. Louis was able to avoid those excessive deaths. 
A hundred years later, these are the two scenarios we face. A difference not in whether you get the coronavirus, but when you get it. That could mean the difference between life and death, maybe for someone you know. But we have to act now. All right, so thank you for uh, watching a short video. And uh, here, here, if we can see that World Health Organization have already warned every citizen of the countries in the world to take the minimum precautions like social distancing, wearing the mask, and not rushing to the hospital unless you are critically ill. But I think we, we are not doing that in this situation because I know, I see the videos, I follow the news from India that people are so much worried and rushing to the hospital where they are getting more infected than they are. So let us discuss few preventive methods in the following videos. So what could be the route of transfer of the disease? COVID-19 is spread from person to person, mainly through coughing, sneezing, and talking and breathing. And here, the droplets from the respiratory secretions from coughing or sneezing landing on mucosal surfaces, nose, mouth, mouth and uh, eyes. And those are the aerosols, a solid particles or the liquid particles suspended in the air can affect you and the contact touching something with the SARS-2 virus on it and then touching mouth nose or eyes that's when the virus can get into you and when you feel like you are sick you should watch for your symptoms so people with the COVID-19 have had a wide range of symptoms reported ranging from, but that are not limited to fever, chills, cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, and you could be, it could be a new loss of taste or smell. You could also feel sore throat and congestion could occur and nausea and vomiting. Also, I would request every one of you to please seek emergency, medical emergency, in case of any severity. So now we have gone through all the slides, like how did uh, coronavirus actually get in and what WHO has uh, initially warned every country and what could be the symptoms. So, but we also have to discuss how did it get worse day by day in the USA, also in the world since 2020. So not knowing the severity of virus in the initial days made it worse. So people are commuting every day through public transportations and due to international traveling, restaurants, pubs, and gathering at public places. So not taking the safety measures for the growing pandemic has led us today in this critical situation. So if we look at the graphs, so countries with the most reported infections during the year 2020 and 2021. So we can see like a lot of countries here. So first one could be the first one could be India, then US, Brazil, France, Turkey, Italy, UK, Argentina, Germany, and Russia. So here, what happened to India? So if you can see that ash color bar, so that indicates the number of cases in the year 2020. 
and the orange bar is the number of cases reported in 2021. So when we see the bar for India, it has tremendously raised in 2021. That could be many reasons, not only the, not only for not taking the precautions, but it also could be for the second variant which attacked India in the year 2021. And if you look at the bars for US, we had, we had like crazy cases in the year 2020. Everyone, everyone is dying just because of COVID. And hope everyone knows New York City in the United States. So it is the biggest city and the world, whole world runs on the New York City. And as I live close by New York City, I could imagine and I could see what has happened actually. So streets were calm, everything was calm. No, I don't see no person on the streets because everyone was scared and hiding themselves in the houses. So it was that worse in the year 2020. But so in every virus, every virus will gradually go up and it will mutate and uh, it will increase the number of persons affecting. But if we can see in the US, it has surprisingly fallen down. So not only the vaccination, vaccination, this country got vaccination not so early in between in the starting and in between the year of 2021 but how did the graph fall from 2020 to 2021 so i would say we have been taking the precautions since day one of the coronavirus and until today and you cannot see a person outside without a mask they might forget their keys for their home their cars and everything but they don't forget the mask because we are the persons who have to take care of ourselves and our country and we have to surpass the virus okay then uh, let's let's watch about the brazil so it has a slight difference it is not much and you can see the france Turkey, Italy, UK, Argentina, Germany, and Russia. So you can see the bars for the 2020 and 2021 year. So most of the countries have decreasing their coronavirus cases during the year 2021. So what are we doing? So what is our mistake? So do we have to act or is the government is taking care of these things or every individual have to be a part of these coronavirus. So let's watch this one. So what has happened during the second hit of the virus in India? So in early February 2021, hospitalization numbers have plummeted like very crazy. And India was reporting as many new cases per day as New York City state, I mean, uh, as New York state despite being 50 times as populous. Multiple studies have found that second variant is between 40% and 70% more contagious than earlier iterations of the virus and appears to be more lethal. Over a period of time from about November 2020, the population probably became a little bit complacent thinking it was out of our lives. So during these times in the year 2020, so people were scared and they restricted to their homes for a certain period of time. I could say from January to November, then they thought it is all over and they get it out of, the, out of their houses and they're on the streets meeting people, hanging out and doing all this kind of stuff. But the virus is not yet done. And, but India is now the, due to that reason, India became the epic center of the global pandemic and focal point of international concerns. 
as of may 2021 this year the country has reported more than 350000 new cases alone in a day which is which is very sorry to hear that but it is it is what it is and while the brazil is approaching to 450000 cases which is in the second place and india became third country on monday 24th of may 2021 to surpass 300000 deaths related to covid 19 so while doing my research on the background like what is going wrong and what has happened and what is happening right now in the country i have came through i have came across a video which showed like how bad it is in india so i just literally don't want to show you guys that video but we have to talk about the facts right now so i would like to play this video so let's watch it
sorry guys i know it is a uh, very heartbreaking to watch these kind of videos but uh, we have to know where we are where we are mistaking and what could we do to overcome all these situations so uh, if you look at some preventive methods in the following slides then uh, we will be able to control this situation and get over it and i am adding all these links in the at the end for the references you could watch them anytime so now we have watched the video and we can see the number of people dying due to the coronavirus and in that video it is mentioned like saying in the year 2021 may 2021 india has more cases than the united states everyone knows that united states had a severe cases during the initial days but how would how did india get into that place so it might it could be several reasons um it could be because of the second variant or it could be the negligence of the people or the country i would say so if you look at some of the drawbacks for having a surge in india when compared to the other countries so i put india on the left side and other countries on the right side so if you can look at here india has a very dense population and inadequate political management and not satisfying infrastructure and limited resources lack of knowledge in some areas of the country urban and rural areas under development poor communication between the government and the citizens but if you look at the other countries they are slightly less populated and they are adequate political management satisfying infrastructure and they have the ample resources and everyone is aware of the situation and they are slightly or well developed and they have a very good communication communication between the people and the government and everyone is taking precautions what they have to take during this period of times so what i would suggest is we we could not claim anything on the god how it is working and how it is not but it is our responsibility to act in this period of times because government could not come to you come to each house and each member and ask you to take care of yourself and the country it is your responsibility to take care of yourself your family and the country so we have to we have to uh, think about think about it like so what happens if i have if i have to go out and if i meet some people with the infection and what could be the scenario and what i mean like how it can affect my for me and for my family and for my relatives whoever it may be every human being is a human being so let's watch some preventive methods so what are we doing different than other countries so regardless of the drawbacks which i just discussed in the previous slide there were many reasons behind the serious surge of covid virus in the year 2021 the virtually uplifting of all restrictions and holding massive political rallies and religious festivals that drew tens of thousands of pilgrims from all over the country i hope everyone heard about uh, the kumbha mela or the politics or uh, the what do we say the elections and all this kind of stuff which is unnecessary during these times but not knowing the fact the country would fall into a very critical situation the government has initiated these things and public has tremendously accepted and they got onto the roads and they spread the virus like anything so taking easy on wearing a mask and spreading the infection has gotten worse 
and large group gatherings at political rallies, attending events may have played a key role for the spread of the infection. So to get the pandemic situation in control around the world, so what all countries are doing, even with the India. So every country has started restricting the travelers from all countries because the coronavirus initially it spread from some country. Let's, uh, let's not focus on where it came from because we cannot uh, blame some country for doing this one. So, and because it is not yet proven. So let's, let's think about the international traveling. So that might be the reason. So every country has started restricting the travelers from different countries. And the CDC and World Health Organization has activated its emergency operation center to better provide ongoing support to the 2019 coronavirus responses. And also for the 2020, I could conclude that. And extended the help on providing more advanced healthcare system. And information on the safety measures have started spreading all over by using social media as their main platform. Since everyone is restricted to their homes and everyone is not, everyone is not asked to come out of their houses, so uh, social media has played a very critical role during these times. And every country have mandated the use of masks to stop the spread of the contagious virus. Washing and sanitizing the hands are mandatory and restricted on the public gatherings and countries have focused on sanitizing the surfaces and the public places. So I just want to talk about uh, a great country and uh, you know how small uh, Australia is, but even though they didn't think about their economy fall down or they didn't think about uh, anything and the Australia government has taken a wonderful step. They want their citizens to be safe and their country to be safe. So they have, they have made a, they have made a crazy decision. I would really appreciate the president or the prime minister of that country and the political bodies, whoever it may be. So what Australia has really did. So Australia has become a pandemic success story during these times. Now I, I could, I could say, I could cite this uh, saying, uh, Australia did much better than any other country in the world. So the nation of the 26 million is close to eliminating community transmission of the coronavirus. So the country has chose to quickly and tightly seal its borders. So they have stopped every communication coming from the different countries and they have stopped the flights, they have start, uh, stopped the commuting, they have stopped everything. They just want themselves to be safe and they should not be affecting by the virus because knowing the fact that uh, Australia is a small country, they know what could be the situation if they are infected with the virus. If it spread all over the country and I think no one will be alive in the country because uh, it has a very small population too. And after 111 days of the lockdown, they have initiated a lockdown for 111 days and the number of average daily cases fell below five, which is surprising. And I think they, they already left up, uh, lift up the lockdowns and uh, everything was normal. Then, in, then I think they have initiated the lockdown again due to this coronavirus second wave. And Australia have also broadly accepted the measures. And now Australia is, Australia's COVID-19 response has been the envy of many countries with Dr. Fauci's recently praising the country for being a world leader on containment and management of emerging variants of the virus. So everyone knows like what are the, who are the frontline workers? It could be a nurse, it could be a doctor, it could be anyone working for hospitals or anywhere. So, they are, they are the main sources to become, to make us alive today. 
So frontline workers have played a very crucial role in saving millions of lives. They are relentlessly working to get the situation under control. Healthcare workers on the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic risk exposure to the coronavirus daily, and this poses obvious risks to their physical health. And public health crisis is taking a toll on their mental health as well, contributing to anxiety, stress, depression, loneliness, and other concerns, in which 93% were experiencing stress and 86% reported anxiety and 77% reported frustrations and 75% said they are overwhelmed because you know healthcare workers are also human beings just like us so so let us put this let us put this way if if we are sitting home and if you are blaming the healthcare workers or if and they are taking our part and they are making us safe and they are they are giving their lives to just to save our lives so which is a which is a great thing so we should always appreciate the frontline workers for their help and many workers also reported showing their concerns towards their lost family family members friends and the families okay so considering the fact the healthcare workers never stopped to provide the services during these pandemic days and as you all know about 39% said they didn't feel like they had adequate emotional support they are relentlessly working they are at the hospitals saving lives but if we think about themselves we almost lost like 115000 healthcare workers during their course of work and during this during their help to the people and the countries and uh, here are a couple of citations you can go over there and see how they have offered their lives to just save the lives of the country and the normal citizens so what what an healthcare worker what do we go through wearing a personal protective equipment so i would i would request like everyone should understand what it takes to be a healthcare worker we as a healthcare workers wear personal protective equipment in our line of duty every day to day life to save millions of lives and it was never easy and it is never easy to breathe inside a fully covered equipment so what can be a giveaway to the healthcare workers as of now and if you could see this is uh, the picture behind the scene is me wearing the personal protective equipment in my line of duty so it is the time to act now so if you wear a mask then these people don't need to wear this and they don't need to live lose their lives as your life is important their life is too so i would suggest everyone i would request everyone to do their minimal things so when it's time to act it is now nevertheless so it is critically important to understand the progression of symptoms of covid-19 infected persons so stop the spread of disease so stay home when you are when you are sick be informed and be prepared limit your physical contacts avoid shaking hands and hugging especially with those who are sick wear a mask and maintain social distancing at least at 6 feet apart wash your hands frequently and use alcohol based sanitizers avoid touching your eyes nose and mouth cough or sneeze into a tissue or your elbow clean and disinfectant frequently touched objects and surfaces maintaining a good hygiene would be a plus so
so here are the here are few guidelines recommended by world health organization i know a lot of people here on this call are a working professional so i would like to go through these few of these guidelines so that might help you guys to take care of yourself so if we could see here uh, the first more first foremost thing is avoid in person meetings use online conferencing like how we are doing right now and the second one would be unavoidable in person meetings such should be like short very short span and in a large meeting rooms where people can sit at least 6 feet from each other and the third one could be eliminate unnecessary travels and cancel or postpone your travels unless it is very important so do not congregate in work rooms pantries copy rooms or any any part of the office and fifth one could be i mean like uh, this is a very general one bring your lunch and eat at your desk or away from others and uh, avoid public transportation or go early to or go early or late to avoid rush hours and uh, considering the fact we have a massive population so i would definitely suggest everyone uh, to just follow these precautions at least to decrease the spread of the virus and limit your recreational or other leisure classes meetings and activities etc so finally finally i could conclude saying that prevention is much better than cure and uh, if given a chance please get vaccinated and uh, if you want to talk about the vaccine the vaccine is helping even though it is clinically not 100% proven it is really helping and it is uh, boosting up the immune system so that is how you can uh, avoid the virus even though virus come into your body i think the vaccine could be able to fight against the virus and give you more immune power and uh, here are the references from where i have got the information so i have a i have did a little bit of research on uh, how the indian government and how the indian population is affecting and uh, how it is uh, different from all other countries so you could uh, refer to any of these uh, references to get more information so i would like to open a discussion room so here uh, so i just want to let you guys know that uh, this presentation is more of uh, taking the preventive methods and uh, i want to discuss because i am right now i'm living in the united states and uh, i can see people join from australia and i can see the people join from india so what all these countries like what all these countries are doing to decrease the virus so if anyone want to talk about something and uh, if anyone have questions uh, this discussion room is open and uh, you can ask me any questions i would give my best to share my answers thank you vinay sir thank you sir well enlarged and depth view of corona virus and its spreading at various parts of the world and especially regarding india and very what are the causes especially large gatherings moving closely highly populated areas and so on now the suffering in india is on especially we don't know uh, at uh, what is the end time but we try to give awareness and get awareness among ourselves and uh, to the participant and uh, after going home they have to uh, keep in mind and spread some right. of the messages i received uh purna malavat if you want okay. any question please ask vinay sir 
please introduce yourself and ask please madam purna purna malavat is she on call purna madam Okay, Anand. Sir, you can go for the next one. Next, Anand. Anand. Hello. Ah, hello. Hello, sir. Can you hear ah, me? Please can. Ah, yes, sir. We are hearing. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to ask question. It was such a please wonderful. Please introduce, present. sir. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Anand Masagala. I am right now. I live in Hyderabad. I've done my bachelor. So. Uh, i was listening all this presentation it was really wonderful and so well so much valuable information that uh, vinay brother gave to us so in this context i just uh, wanted to ask a few questions related to coronavirus uh, so the main misconception in in, in india is uh, so many people my friends and family members are they are afraiding to take this vaccination and as few few people are talking that uh, this uh, covax and uh, covid shield vaccines are not doing well as compared to other vaccines in america so in america you know, the most popular vaccines are johnson and johnson uh, uh, and the other one is pfizer and astrazeneca so are these how much uh, uh, these vaccines are safe uh, i want to ask that uh, vinay brother indian vaccines to covid shield and covax uh do they make on the same formula that america vaccines are making so is it safe or not so if a government managed to give vaccine to entire country uh can we defeat covid uh, like america did so that's my question okay thank you sir please vinay sir please answer okay uh thank you so much anand uh i would really appreciate your question because uh, i think this might be a big question for most of the people uh, uh, who are not really aware of the vaccine what it could be and uh, what it could help in what way so uh, so i just don't want to conclude saying that uh, pfizer or johnson and johnson or moderna in america are doing better than uh, covax in or uh, sputnik or whatever it is in india because you know uh, considering the fact uh, these vaccines are uh, imported from different countries and india is also making the vaccines but uh, if you if you could do a little bit research on this so you might know what is a brand product and what is a generic product so these are all the brand products the gen, uh, pfizer and johnson and johnson but they gave the they gave the raw material to the indian government and uh, indian pharmaceutical companies to do their best so i would say they both act in the same way uh, they don't make any big difference but uh, only the thing is one is a generic and uh, one is a brand so there might be a slight differences but uh, uh, finally i could say that uh, these will not affect because taking i mean having a vaccine is a good thing yeah uh, you will be at least having like 90% of uh, the immune system built from the uh, from the vaccine so i think uh, uh, you should just uh, get rid of that uh, question i mean like that thing in the mind and everyone has to get vaccinated if possible if given a chance everyone has to get vaccinated and no vaccine is different not i mean like in america the cases has decreased not only with the vaccine even i mean like uh, researchers says only 40% of americans have been vaccinated until today only 40% so you could think of the rest of the 60% so they are still doing better so not only the vaccine but also what they are doing on in day to day life and how they are preventing themselves from getting the virus so that could be my answer uh, anand getting ah, vaccination so getting vaccination is important compulsory whatever the against news is only misconception and misinterpretation right now I, you, now for adding that information asraya singiredi Sing please ask your question asraya stravia singiredi stravia singiredi please hello everyone thank you rajendra sir hello suhasini ma'am 
uh, and hello vinay thanks for the information uh, it looks like a very good presentation and hope you did a good research on the topic uh, myself i am shavya singhiredi working as a validation engineer for your pharmaceutical company in greater boston area even uh, i also go through like same experience every day at my work uh, work area regarding a pharm- uh, working working in a pharmaceutical company by wearing a personal protective equipment so uh, in your presentation when com- when coming to the presentation uh, vinay can you please uh, elaborate on the slide to uh, like which is what uh, are we doing different than other countries when compared with india vinay sir please sure yeah thank you shavya thank you for your question i would uh, be more than happy to answer your question so uh, what are we doing different than other countries so like uh, rajareddy sir just mentioned it is not only about the vaccination it is also about the preventive methods what we are taking so in the year 2021 you know how many people came out of their houses and just spreading the virus like anything this is which is very wrong because uh, even the even the math says like uh, there will be a situation coming up in the world like facing those all kind of viruses or the flus or anything so we should restrict ourselves to the house and we should always take the preventive methods because these are not these are not fun and these are not uh, these are taking lives the flu and the virus are taking lives of lot of people so i would uh, definitely recommend everyone to wear a mask no matter what it is just wear a mask that's it uh wearing a mask is the main main thing i would say then uh, uh following all the precautions and don't get out of your houses and uh, don't get on the streets and uh, don't ga- don't uh, make uh, any gatherings unnecessarily i mean like it unless it is uh, a very 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 crucial one and uh, i would like to add one more uh, crucial point in this one because see uh there is a there is a difference between a common flu like cold fever and uh, the virus so in india what has happened is uh when i'm going through some research papers i have found out that many people even if they get a cold cough sneeze or whatever it is they are rushing to the hospitals right away so they are in a, they are in a situation assuming that they are affected with the corona virus but most of them are really not so what has happened is their panic situation is overtaking their health and due to their panic situation and when they get into the panic situation their blood pressures are raising and uh, they are they are just thinking like uh, something is going to happen to them so so for that reason they are rushing to the hospitals because and they are really getting infected at the hospital not in their houses so what i would suggest is even if you have like mild symptoms like mild cough or uh, mild sneezing or a mild cold whatever it is you try to take some over the counter medication for a couple of days at least and and i would suggest do a good hygiene like uh, warm water is always suggested and uh, you know uh, do all kind of things where you can prevent yourself from a, from the flu not only the virus so that's that's how you can uh, uh, that's how people in india can lower the cases also because rushing to the hospital doesn't make any sense and everyone knows that the hospital beds are 100% full and they are not taking any patients coming into the hospital and no oxygen is available so and also i would i would like to add one more point to this one so coming to the oxygen so when they will feel like oxygen levels are down so when their blood pressure goes high and they i mean their blood pressure when their blood pressure goes high they get into the very panic situation and uh, they can assume like they are having a shortness of breath or uh, they couldn't do something or they couldn't breathe and all these kind of things getting into their mind is leading the population 
or the people go to the hospitals and getting affected there so my bottom line is please try to be at your home and try to take over the counting medication at least for a couple of days and see and if it get worse definitely i would uh, like to uh, go for a emergency i think uh, i have answered your question uh, yes thank you so much for the information thank no you worries. sir now next uh, banu misra please respond banu misra shushma priyanka banu misra are you there shushma shushma priyanka navin martha navin martha please respond navin martha looks like they are on they are not on the call sir uh, you can uh, for the next now i request dr g renika madam head of microbiology department of host college please give her feedback madam on this lecture dr renika madam yes sir please give her feedback madam so uh, good evening uh, one and all i'm very glad that i'm able to participate in today's meeting it was very insightful and also it helped to frame a guiding manual towards light towards fighting the deadly ongoing pandemic so i thank uh, the speaker vinay arepalli for sharing his valuable thoughts and his research on the corona virus and the methods to tackle it these kind of uh, webinars have to be frequently conducted in order to bring awareness so actually the present pandemic will have far reaching consequences that are unprecedented in this modern era so let us all feel the responsibility and go forward to give a check to this uh, miserable situation and save our nation thank you very much and at the outset i also congratulate suhasini madam and the department of zoology for organizing such an informative uh, webinar thank you one and all thank you dr venka madam. madam very much da dr kursi dalam sir maulana abul kalam university hyderabad please respond sir dr kursi dalam sir assistant professor Mano University, Hyderabad. Kutsi Dalam, sir. Looks like uh, sir is on mute. Deepa. Next, I call upon Deepa. Deepika. Deepa. Deepika, please. Okay. Good evening to one and all. This is Deepika and I am from BZC final year. Firstly, I thank Pingli Degree College for conducting this program. And I'm very happy to be a part of this because it's a very good platform for all of us to get interact with the other colleges and other states. And every one of us uh, are experiencing the worst situations uh, due to COVID-19 and uh, many people are facing very dangerous situations. I think uh, one of the reasons for this is due to lack of awareness. And uh, uh, thank you so much for selecting this program at this uh, particular time. And uh, this is very informative. And uh, I think uh, very nice uh, program. And next I thank Vinay sir for, uh, for very clear and uh, good presentations. I have given everything in a clear way. Thank you so much, sir. And from the uh, history to uh, to the uh, spreading of uh, COVID and uh, its growth and symptoms and everything, sir, have explained in a detailed way. I'm very thankful to you, sir, for your valuable presentation. And uh, 
I think I, I, I just want to tell you something. If we learn something from any webinars or anything, we have to uh, just spread that to our surroundings. And from this also, I have learned... Mute yourself. Ma? No, she's okay. Hello. Yeah, go Ma ahead. Deepika, please continue. Oh, okay, sir. So we have to be careful for ourselves and we have to educate other people and I have uh, gained uh, lots of knowledge prior to my previous knowledge, what I'm having uh, on this uh, COVID-19. So definitely I'm going to spread this information to my surroundings. Uh, and uh, you also do the same by this helping uh, the people. Uh, no, economically, economically is not only the one thing. Uh, spreading the awareness, giving them uh, the knowledge on this is also a, one type of helping. So please do this and uh, save uh, our country. And uh, once again, I thank each and everyone for uh, giving this, this wonderful opportunity to share my opinion on this. Thank you. Thank you, Deepika. Thank you, uh, Deepika. Uh, so you have uh, added a very good mm. point, this one, uh, saying that uh, helping uh, economically is not only the way, but uh, we should also give a moral support to the people who are infected and I mean like who are infected and who are in a bad situation, we should definitely give uh, the, our moral support for them too. And uh, like you said, I'm happy uh, that uh, you have learned a little bit more than what you know before. So I would also uh, keep that in my mind, like uh, I will also spread the awareness wherever I can and I would also like to help the people as of I can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ka Ka Deepika. Now this is the time to convey thanks to everyone. Now I request to give a vote of thanks by B. Kalpana, Assistant Professor of Zoology of the Host College. Sir, one minute, sir, before the uh, vote of thanks. I Please. request to Venkai, sir, HOD, Head Department of Zoology, Kakti University, to please uh, bless us, sir. Please, Venkai, sir, please carry on. Okay, good evening to all of you. So, evening, I congratulate uh, Rajaradi, sir, and uh, Madam Suhasini Garu for conducting a wonderful international webinar today. So I congratulate the main speaker, Vinay Kumar, sir, uh, manufacturer scientist in USA. So he has delivered a wonderful and thought-provoking uh, lecture on the COVID-19. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a valuable message on this present situation. So so now India is, you are well, you are well compared the other countries and India. So India is uh, economically backward uh, compared than other countries, but the people uh, awareness is very less sir, compared than other countries. So here the spreading of COVID is very uh, high in, in, in present situation. So the second right. wave of the Corona is very sp immediately spread in, on this uh, moment. Okay. So because of the awareness, uh, very, very less awareness of the people <coughs> in India. So the government has not facilitated to aware the, aware to, uh, how to avoid the uh, riskness of this COVID-19. So initially what happened, government has provided the number of medical facilities and also <laughs> build the hospitals and uh, oxygen supply. Uh, these, these measures are not taking initially, they take uh, casual. So hence, uh, Sar has already mentioned, uh, the people are gathering. Gathering is very important. The spread the disease to the overall the country. Why? Because the Kumbh Melas and election rallies and other uh, gatherings are occurred very huge in, in, in our country. That's why the disease is very spread. Uh, in rapid, uh, rapid spreading is occurs in our country, sir. So most right. of the deaths are occur. And also, uh, most of the aged people, they have afraid of phobia, COVID phobia. So that is the... Uh, main important factor as people they are afraid of the disease and uh, awareness uh, uh, programs are not conducted uh, government and other uh, government sources so most of the deaths are occur in the second wave of the corona so compare than other countries thank you sir thank you very uh, wonderful lecture you had to deliver a very thought provoking and uh, very informative sir Vinay, sir i congratulate and uh, 
ఐ కంగ్రాచులేట్ ద ప్రిన్సిపల్ సార్ రాజరెడ్డి గారు అండ్ మేడం సుహాసిని గారు అండ్ అదర్ ఎంటైర్ కాలేజీ ఆఫ్ ద పింగిల్ కాలేజ్ అండ్ మై ఓన్ బిహాఫ్ అండ్ ఆర్ ఆల్సో ద on behalf of the department of zoology karate university i congratulate once again thank you sir thank you very much on this occasion thank you thank you venkaya sir dr venkaya sir thank, thank you very you much sir thank you and blessing yes sir venkaya okay, sir uh, rajareddy sir i would like to add a point uh, for uh, venkaya sir's uh, uh, reasons uh, so he looks like uh, he had gone through the presentation very quickly and uh, so he came to a conclusion saying that uh, the hospital management are uh, not really doing well during the initial days so uh, venkay sir if we look at the china so what they did yeah. they built a hospital less than less than like 10 days or uh, less than mm. less than 2 weeks is mm. very surprising so how they are proactively working to get the situation in control so here the hospital is playing it should play a very vital role to get every yeah. city at every, every citizen in control so mm. venkay uh, looks like uh, he get uh, he get all the points and he also discussed about uh, the people uh, phobias and all uh, which is very good thing and uh, thank you so much for your uh, thoughts on my presentation sir thank you sir thank in, you in such situations awareness among the people is second thought and awareness for the government is important right right yeah, yeah. so yes, building a, a big hospital in 10 days in china is possible right why mm-hmm. could not we build uh, the such a hospital even today also we are just starting or increasing the capacity of hospitals yeah so, so uh, it is the mo- right. motive motive even the government. government should not supply the oxygen sir properly actually patients yes, sir. are suffer yes and actually uh, like government the... is not uh, so serious about yeah. the issues yes so, so just now the, they uh, are feeling the heat right so if you look into one of my slide where i compared uh, india to other countries uh, there i have added a point uh, saying that government is underdeveloped and uh, they are not taking the right decision at the right time so they have to act smart at this kind of situation so uh, we as a citizens see i mean, I mean uh, we can we are the rulers of the country every citizen is the ruler of the country not the political parties even uh, so i would like to add a point when i was in india uh, i know the things how it works but uh, you know uh, we have to, like everyone here on the meeting very well educated so we have to act now and we have to make our decisions and we have to do the government to do our work so i would suggest and i would, because i can see a lot of uh, young people join on this call they would be the future citizens so i request everyone to go broadly into this thing and uh, be conscious thank you sir now i request b kalpana assistant professor of zoology to convey vote of thanks good evening to all good evening, i deem it a great honor and privilege to propose this vote of thanks for this international webinar so first and foremost at the outset it's my privilege to acknowledge thanks to our chairperson and the principal of our bingli government college for women that is dr d raja reddy sir for his constant support and encouragement for organizing this webinar thank you so much sir at the outset i would like to congratulate dr d swahasini madam head of the department of zoology for organizing such a wonderful webinar thank you so much madam <clears throat> our gratitude to dr y venkaya sir head of the department of zoology of pakatiya university in spite of uh, having busy schedule you have taken some time for us thank you very much sir uh, for attending this webinar and giving suggestions also thank you so much sir and our special thanks to today's guest speaker uh, vinay kumar arepelli garu <clears throat> you have uh, given so many Uh, suggestions for our students and also uh, who has attended for this webinar 
for all of us uh, we are so much thank you uh, thankful to you sir thank you so much sir and our sincere thanks to uh, our advisors dr a sanjeevaya pg cgta president and dr k surender reddy sir pg cgta general secretary for constant support for this webinar and thanks to our advisory committee members that is dr istari sir pos of kakatiya university zoology department and dr shemita madam zoology department member of zoology department kakatiya university thank you madam thank you sir for your continuous support for us and thanks to all the organizing committee members that is vice principal dr r ravi sir uh, our academic coordinator dr d ramakrishna reddy sir dr g renuka madam head of the microbiology department b jagadish sir assistant professor of library sciences for being the, uh, with us for this webinar with your valuable suggestions sir thank you so much and finally thanks to all the esteemed faculty from all over the country and our college faculty our students all other distinguished person uh, personalities and participants from karnataka west bengal maharashtra andhra pradesh telangana australia london usa for making this international webinar such a grand success thank you so much all of you and finally thank you madam for giving me this opportunity thank you so much one and all once again thank you kalpana uh, sir one request on behalf of uh, uh, our webinar one of the participants siddhant venkatla australia would like to speak a few words on this webinar kindly please permit, madam sir. please please madam hi uh, good evening Your good evening one and all good evening, evening one and all i am uh, siddhant renkutla i am from australia Pre currently talking from melbourne here uh, it's very cold outside it's like 9 degrees outside uh, anyways thank you for giving me this opportunity to, to speak uh, thank you zoology department thank you suhasni garu uh, for organizing this call uh, thank you thank you vinay garu it was a very informative session and uh, uh, your uh, research from this presentation uh, comparing what's happening the other side of the world is very good and since i am living in australia uh, i can say speak a few words like how we got out of it uh, out of the uh, covid uh, situation like in australia we uh, we maintained a strict over a 100 day lockdown uh, like we were we were having practicing all the uh, covid 19 precautions like wearing masks from the day one where we got the first case in australia so that is what helped us to get out of the situation and i would strongly encourage all the uh, all the leaders like such as the zoology department from pingil college and all the professors to spread awareness and uh, please don't panic from the videos which is uh, uh, since i'm away from the from my motherland i feel very uh, nostalgic and i used to cry sometimes seeing all the news uh, news overseas in india what's happening what's happening there so i would strongly encourage i would strongly ask uh, um, leaders like you uh, educational leaders like you to spread spread awareness uh, how to get out of the situation and uh, um, practice strict covid 19 precautions like, such as wearing mask and everything uh, please keep yourself safe and your family safe thank you for giving this me this opportunity and overall it was a good session and uh, thank you so much nigar for giving me this opportunity thank you thank uh, you sidan for your words so uh, i just want to add one more thing to this uh, for the for uh, sidan renukuntla's comment uh, he was saying that uh, they were being taking care since day one which is which is absolutely amazing so yeah. even here in america i am fully vaccinated i have got two shots of my doses but still i still wear a mask even though if i get out of my house except except i am in the house if even if i step out of my house i am definitely wearing my mask not only me everyone is doing that so 
here more of uh, what we could do is we have to prevent ourselves from the virus or uh, from the disease or whatever it is so it is our responsibility to care up to take care of ourselves and uh, so uh, like he mentioned like siddhu mentioned uh, siddhant mentioned uh, should not panic to the situation that is the that is the biggest uh, mistake what we are doing but i know as a human being we are uh, i mean like when we get sick we are uh, we get into the panic situation but uh, uh, it is my request to everyone to take care of their family members also because uh, elderly people they are a little bit uh, worried more than uh, the younger ones so we have to teach our parents and uh, our elderly people and what's going on the situation and uh, we have to we have to help them to get better and uh, thank you siddhu for your uh, comments on the session yeah thank you vinay thank you one and all i with this uh, madam suhasini madam shall i conclude it madam at the outside so, i would like to thank principal sir dr raja reddy garu for giving us this opportunity to conduct the uh international webinar and i thank our speaker young speaker vinay kumar arepelli for giving his valuable time within a very short period we have arranged this uh webinar thank you so much vinay for your valuable uh, suggestions and also your presentation was very 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 wonderful it is need of the hour and thank you very much and thank all the participants from bottom of my heart and thank you thank you so much for making this webinar a grand success thank you very much thank, thank you, you everyone uh, please take care of yourself don't get into your panic situations and uh, please be aware of things going around the world and uh, take uh, necessary preventive methods and we can if we could save ourselves we could save our families and if we could save our families we could also save our country get to getting from getting into this situation and uh, i would be and i am more than happy to be a part of this elite team today and uh, i would uh, love to thank uh, dr rajeddi garu dr suhasini garu and uh, uh, everyone on this cell uh, banot kalpana garu and uh, venkaya sir everyone you know, so for bringing me and uh, giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts and views and uh, Uh, making a difference and uh, bringing the preventive methods and uh, educating the children educating the students who are on this call and my family members whoever what whoever is watching so if you have any questions uh, i will drop my email here uh, so if you have any questions i would uh, be definitely more than happy to answer you you can email me uh, all your questions and i will definitely get back to you very soon thank you vinay uh, thank you so much thank you vinay okay thank you and madam thank you madam please to please fill your feedback form uh, with which you can get your e certificate also thank you thanks thank, thank you very thank much thank you dr suhasini madam thank you vinay sir thank you siddhu sir with this once again i convey my heartfelt thanks and